This morning on CBS 2 News, more information on the disappearance of Michael Vaughn may be released today. Where and when you can tune in. Plus, remembering the four Idaho students killed in Moscow, how communities across the state are mourning the lives lost. Plus, lava flow in Hawaii slowing down when experts expect the eruption on the state's largest island to stop. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live look from downtown Boise on this wet start to your Thursday. We're kicking off a new month, December 1st, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. I'm Ashley Carter and happy December 1st. Mm -hmm. The weather is really feeling like. Yeah, the weather's <laughs> feeling like December. We're seeing some rain this morning, but some warmer air still sticking around those clouds trapping in warm air. And that's why we're seeing temperatures in the 40s this morning, something we haven't seen in quite some time. When you start out your day this morning, you'll see some rain, but you'll also see temperatures in the 40s from 6 and 7 o'clock, 42 degrees at 6 and 7 o'clock and 40 degrees expected at 8 o'clock. If you take a look outside right now, you'll see some rain and we're going to continue to see rain throughout the morning. It will stick around throughout the morning and even into the afternoon. We'll continue to see a light to moderate rain and we're seeing a little bit of wind out right now. A southeasterly wind of about eight miles per hour dropping that feels like temperature down to 37 degrees. But as I said, we're seeing rain out this morning. That rain continuing across much of the Treasure Valley. As you head more north, you'll continue to see snow and we're going to see snow over in the mountain areas throughout the day today as well. Now the chance of precipitation here in the valley will drop off as we head into the weekend, but Sunday is our next best chance of seeing rain. That'll last from Sunday into Sunday evening. High temperatures for today, 43 degrees in Boise, 41 in Emmett and 43 in Caldwell and Nampa, 40 degrees in Ontario and Mountain Home and up in the mountains, 32 degrees in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as Sarah mentioned, it is a wet start to your Thursday morning, so keep that in mind on your morning commute. As you can see on the cameras, traffic moving smoothly, not too many cars out on the road yet, and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car this morning, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more teen traffic updates. We'll be hearing from the Fruitland Police Chief about Michael Vaughn, his case later today. Now the Chief's news conference, it'll be at one o'clock and we'll interrupt programming to bring it to you live right here on CBS2. We'll also stream it live on IdahoNews.com and our CBS2 Facebook page. Now you'll recall earlier this month, they made an arrest in the case. This is Sarah Wandra who was taken into custody. Her home searched and her backyard dug up. We hope to hear what, if anything, was found in that search. The house is just a few minutes away from Michael's home. And Michael, he disappeared in the summer of 2021. He was just five years old at the time. Again, we'll get this update this afternoon. You can watch it live beginning at 1 o'clock right here on CBS2 and IdahoNews.com. And people across Idaho gathering overnight to remember the four murdered University of Idaho students. Candlelight vigils held from Moscow to Pocatello all the way to Boise. Idaho doesn't experience violence like this very often. Um, it's, it's grieving for people who maybe didn't even know the victims. It's, it's, uh, it's a very, very strong and powerful feeling for many. Dozens showing up to the University of Idaho Boise campus to honor the four U of I students, Zanna, Ethan, Kaylee, and Madison. Others showed their support in different ways. The Boise and West Ada school districts turning on their stadium lights in solidarity with the University of Moscow. Even in Pocatello, more than 550 miles from Moscow, Idaho State University students coming together for a candlelight vigil. You can see this tweet here saying hundreds of miles apart, but still united, Vandal Strong. It really shows how much we care truly about each other. And when they say that we are one big family, we truly are one big family. Tomorrow, friends and family of the students killed are invited to a celebration of life. It is at Real Life Ministries in Post Falls, Idaho. Well, Boise bringing in an outside investigator to look into the activities of former Boise police captain Matt Bringleson. He was recently associated with a racist organization. We need to know whether racist ideology has tainted policing, hiring and promotions, internal investigations, and community interactions in any way. 
Boise Police Chief Ron Weiniger, he says hiring police officers is a robust process and they do what they can to learn about the background of new officers coming in. The one thing we can't necessarily maybe get into is inside their head to know what they think other than what they share with us in response to questions, psychological evaluations. Um, we have uh, other tools available, the polygraph. By next week, we should know how much that independent investigation will cost. Mayor McLean hoping the report and recommendations will offer guidance in hiring a new permanent police chief. Of course, CBS2 will keep you updated on the investigation and its results. Well, Boise Police need your help finding a little girl. Take a look at this photo we're about to show you. They're hoping someone out there knows who she is. Police, they aren't releasing a name, but says officers just want to make sure she's doing okay. They got a concerning report. That's the reason they are looking for her. Now, this is a surveillance photo of her from back on Friday. If you think you know who she is, give a call to BPD. Now to developing news, lava from the world's largest volcano. It's slowing down this morning. Scientists saying that the terrain is what's keeping that flow slow and steady. And as it's getting further away from the vent, the molten goo cooling a little bit faster. Still, it'll be some time before the eruption is over. We expect this flow to keep going. Most Mauna Loa flows like this last for two to three weeks. The highway is our immediate concern right now. That's Ken Hahn. He's a scientist in charge of the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. He says the current flow rate, the soonest at this current flow rate, pardon me, the soonest the lava could get to the road is about two days, but it will likely take a little longer. He also said the lava could change direction and not reach the highway at all. And crews in California preparing for winter weather. Forecasts there include snow, gusty winds, and rain region wide. The perfect storm for power outages. We are pre-staging equipment that's often damaged during the storm. That's stuff like transformers, power poles, cross arms. Um, so that way when the weather passes, our crews can get out there and restore power safely and uh, as quickly as possible. PG&E crews from outside the winter storm impact area are also on standby to provide extra help, especially with downed power lines, which can be dangerous. And the Oregon Department of Transportation hopes to have a highway back open today. Now take a look at this. A landslide is blocking the lanes on Highway 30. They say heavy rain is to blame. The slide even taking a semi truck with it. Thankfully, that driver is OK. Meantime, a different hazard is keeping ODOT crews busy. We've got the plows out there. It's, it's, it looks like it's melting out there. The best winter maintenance tool that we've got is a little sunshine and, and daylight, and that, that'll do well if we can hit some good temperatures this morning. Dan Hamilton with the Oregon Department of Transportation says they have all their winter tools available working to keep I-84 as clear as possible. However, officials add there is a nationwide shortage of road crew staff so you can expect plowing to take a little longer when those winter storms hit. And before we get to weather, dust off your boots and board if you haven't already, because Bogus Basin announcing daily operations begin today. Now, Bogus started a soft opening as of last weekend. They're also planning to start night operations on December 9th. Oh, how awesome. No, oh, that's yeah. fantastic. I love we got a, you know, a, what was it? The first opening mm -hmm. this early in what, 27 years? Yeah, super early opening yeah. here. Yeah, that's great that's to so see. Exciting. Yeah, and more snow headed that way. Yeah, more snow <laughs> headed that way. It's going to be snowing in the mountains throughout the day today as it did yesterday. About six to 10 inches expected in the West Central and the Boise Mountains. So heavy snow expected today. So they'll get some additional snow. And here in Boise, we're going to see rain throughout the morning. And we're also going to see warmer temperatures, clouds trapping in that warmer air that we saw yesterday, but we'll see that mild air start to move out throughout the day today. As you can see, temperatures dropping around 3 p.m. We'll see temperatures drop to 38 after being at 42 at 1 p.m. So temperatures dropping and we'll see cloudy skies throughout the evening. Now we do have a winter storm advisory or winter storm warning in effect for all the areas in pink that will last through Friday morning and through yesterday into Friday morning. They're going to get about 12 to 24 inches of snow. So as I said, about six 
to 10 inches of snow expected in the western central mountains and in the Boise Mountains today. So some heavier snow expected today. We're going to see that milder air start to move out of the region throughout the morning and we're going to see that colder Arctic air move in and that's where we could see that rain turn into some snow over on the foothills as we enter the afternoon. Here's a look at future cast. We're going to see rain throughout the evening, but as you can see here, we are seeing a little bit of snowfall here in Boise it will be very, very light. It will be more of a dusting here in Boise and up on the foothills is where we'll see some. And then over in uh, on Friday, we will see some clouds taking a look at temperatures. We're going to see temperatures cool down over the next couple of days, 43 degrees the highest today. That'll drop to 34 degrees on Friday, and we'll stay in the mid-30s over the next couple of days. Th Saturday expected to be 35 degrees, then we'll drop to 33 on Sunday, and all the way to 31 degrees on Monday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in a few minutes. And some, I mean, nicer warm temperatures mm -hmm. today, which is a nice change from yesterday and yeah. the road conditions we had yesterday. Yeah, warmer temperatures in the morning, but we're really going to cool down tomorrow. And tomorrow morning, we're going to see those cool temperatures. So make mm -hmm. sure you're aware of that. We could yes. see some freezing on the roads tomorrow morning. Important to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long. And as we take a look out there, everything moving along smoothly. Not too many cars out on the road right now. And as you can see, no traffic backups on your screen. Also, not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. CBS 2's Great Idaho Food Drive is sponsored by Les Schwab, TDS Fiber, Two Men in a Truck, and News Talk KBOI. CBS 2, we're working with local businesses to help those struggling to afford food. Now you can help by donating to the Great Idaho Food Drive through December 9th. Everything goes to the Idaho Food Bank and local Idahoans. They need non-perishable food, things like canned protein, fruits and vegetables, soups and stews, whole grain pasta, rice and cereal. You can drop off those donations at any Treasure Valley Les Schwab Tire Center at TDS Fiber or right here at CBS2. We're in downtown Boise. You can also donate money through a link on IdahoNews.com. Well, straight ahead on CBS2 News this morning, working to stop another potential problem for the economy. The bill now on its way to the Senate days before rail workers are set to strike. Plus, the Fed set to raise interest rates once again. Why they say a slowdown, but not a full stop, is on the horizon. Well, hey guys, happy Thursday. It's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Over 30% of these will happen between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. That answer, Ashley got it. It was engagements, guys. Ah, love it. It's a happy time of season. Now for today's question, just 7% of people say it's never acceptable to do this on an airplane. Oh, this is going to be fun, guys. All right, what do you think it is? CBS2 Adventure Weather showing your local forecast across the Gem State in Emmett today. 39 degrees with a rain snow mix. That'll drop to 22 degrees overnight. And tomorrow, 34 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected over in Emmett. Moving to Idaho City, 36 degrees and snow showers expected today. That'll go, drop to cloudy skies with a low of 13 degrees tonight. And then tomorrow, 38 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected in Idaho City. Thank you, Vasily. Well, the White House hosting its first state dinner of the Biden administration tonight with the president and first lady welcoming French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife Bridget. The dinner was inspired by the red, white and blue of both countries' flags. Jill Biden says the menu is an expression of welcome and friendship. New Orleans musician John Batiste is providing the entertainment for the dinner. And lawmakers in Washington took a major step Wednesday towards preventing a potential rail railroad strike set for next week. The House voted to use congressional power to block a strike, and now the bill moves to the Senate. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has more on what's at stake. With a lot riding on the rails, the House of Representatives said no on Wednesday to a potential railroad strike. The joint resolution is passed. 
In an overwhelming vote, the House approved a plan to force railroad companies and their unionized workers to stick to a settlement brokered by the Biden administration back in September. It was later rejected by some unions. Today, we are here to safeguard the financial security of America's families, to protect American economy as it continues to recover, and avert a devastating nationwide rail shutdown. Business groups say the strike could cost the U.S. economy $2 billion every day and put the brakes on shipments of commodities like coal and lumber, even holiday gifts. President Biden has urged Congress to act, frustrating his union allies. The president believes uh, that a bill uh, averting a, a rail strike needs to reach his desk by this weekend. I respectfully disagree with him and how he's going about doing this because what he's doing is taking away the members' right to strike. The bill needs to be approved by the Senate first, which will also take up a separate measure passed by House Democrats that would add seven days of paid sick time to the agreement, which some unions have been fighting for. This last second desperate move to add paid sick leave is un it's, it's unprecedented congressional intervention. If the government doesn't block the strike, the railroads could grind to a halt next Friday. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. That tentative agreement reached in September would give railroad workers a 24% raise over five years, but unions said it did not do enough to address concerns about extended work schedules as well as sick time. Well, in a big speech in Washington yesterday, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, he said the Fed may still raise interest rates higher, but the pace of those hikes could slow down as soon as this month. Now, Powell said there's some good news on inflation, predicting the price of housing and rent would decrease as of next year. But he's also acknowledging the country has, quote, a long way to go in the fight to stop inflation with a hot labor market and the price of services such as dining out and travel continuing to rise. Well, speaking of things continuing to rise, our overnight temperatures, it, mm -hmm. it, uh, I don't want to say it, but it kind of feels like almost balmy out there when you're <laughs> stepping out. And if you're in the Treasure Valley, mm -hmm. that is. If you're in higher elevations, yeah, still very cold. But the thing is, is tomorrow is where we're going to start to see it cool down. We're going to see right. Arctic air move in, and we're going to see those lows drop back into the 20s here in the Treasure Valley and then into the single digits over in the mountains. So it's definitely going to get cold <laughs> over the next couple of days. But as for today, we are just seeing rain and those warmer temperatures this morning. We're seeing some moderate rain just e or just west of Boise right now over in the Meridian area and then in Caldwell they're seeing a rain snow mix right now and then just east of that or just west of that they are seeing some snowfall just in between Caldwell and Ontario over on the roads we aren't seeing too much accumulation this morning but we are seeing a little bit of snow falling and we're going to see this low pressure system continue to move through the region and that's what's going to bring that cold air that I was just talking about earlier now future cast showing us we are going to continue Continue to see snowfall over in the mountain areas throughout the day today here in Boise. We're going to continue to see rain till about four or five o'clock. Then we're just going to see that cold air move in and we'll see cloudy skies throughout the evening. And then tomorrow we'll actually see mostly sunny skies with those colder temperatures. Temperature is going to drop into the mid thirties and we're going to see that mid thirties temp those mid thirties temperatures throughout the next couple of days. And also we're going to see those lows drop into the teens here in Boise. 19 degrees expected on Saturday, so expect some freezing of any kind of liquids on the ground impacting that morning commute tomorrow. 34 degrees expected on Friday, 35 on Saturday, and 33 on Sunday. We'll drop all the way down to 31 degrees on Monday and Tuesday, but we don't expect very much precipitation over the next coming days just for today. And then over in the mountain, they'll see some snowfall, but take a look at those lows dropping into the single digits on multiple different days this week. 23 degrees expected on Friday, 29 on Saturday, Saturday and 30 degrees expected on Sunday. Then we'll drop back down to the 20s early next week over in the mountains. 28 degrees on Monday, 26 on Tuesday, and 26 degrees on Wednesday. Those overnight lows in the mountains still mm -hmm. quite a bit below the average. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll drop back below average as that Arctic air moves in, dropping all those temperatures down. So going to be a chilly next couple of days. Enjoy that warmth while we got it right now. Yes, yeah, and be prepared to bundle up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, we bring a team traffic all morning long. And taking a look out there, starting to see some more headlights on the road. As you can see, roads are wet this morning, so keep that in mind on your morning commute. And not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down on your way out the door. So when you get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. 
And to taking a quick look at gas prices, Idaho's average is now 404 a gallon. The national average, 347. And according to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up is going to be either Walmart or Costco. It lists both locations at 389 a gallon. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, the season of giving may also be taking a hit from higher costs. Why organizations working to collect donations this holiday season say they're not giving up hope. And later, an emotional evening here in Idaho. A look at how the community is gathering to remember the U of I students murdered in Moscow. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Well, inflation is impacting just about everything this holiday season, including the giving spirit. Marley Ginter shares the effect we're seeing this season of giving. Chandelier Kemp takes pride in ringing that Salvation Army bell. Merry Christmas. But this year, donations are tight as everyone pays more for everything from groceries to gas. Sometimes the kids get mad at their mothers and say, I want to put money in the kettle, but they don't have it at the time. And they'd be like, we'll come back. <laughs> Does it worry you that you might not be able to cut it this year? Absolutely. So when we're not able to raise the money that we need to raise, the reality is we have to make the tough decision of what are we not going to help with this year. Captain Larry Carmichael says inflation has hit them hard, but like other nonprofits, they're not losing hope. The latest YOLO community donor survey shows giving remains strong, with 55% saying they'll donate the same as they did last year. 25% said they'll donate even more, and only 14% said they'll donate less. People right now are stressed over how much more they're paying. How mm -hmm. is that trickling down to our charities? Well, if Giving Tuesday, which uh, obviously took place um, yesterday, is any indication, uh, there was not a decrease in donations. Carrie Wood, CEO of the Sacramento Region Community Foundation, says in times of need, she sees more people donating to nonprofits that provide the basics, like food, shelter, and housing needs. Um, especially, you know, knowing that their their fellow humans are, you know, uh, some are suffering now, some are having some challenging times. Jana Lear knows challenging times now out here to help others. Like I don't been homeless, slept in a car before. I don't been through a lot too. So for me doing this, it feels real great to know that there's a lot of things out here that can help people. Idaho's largest toy drive is sponsored by Idaho Central Credit Union, Big O Tires, and Bronco Motors. Well, speaking of giving this season, CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, we're teaming up for Idaho's largest toy drive. Now, all the toys donated during this drive go to the Marine Corps' Toys for Tots, making sure every kid right here in the Treasure Valley can have a present to open this holiday season. Now, if you want to help, you can drop off any new unwrapped toy or book at any of the white Toys for Tots boxes you see across the community or our big collection spot that's at the Sportsman's Warehouse parking lot on Fairview in Meridian. It's across from the village at Meridian. But don't delay the toy drive. It ends next Tuesday, December 6th. Coming up on CBS 2 News, first snow and now a landslide causing headaches in Oregon this morning when this highway is set to reopen. And a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. Join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock after all your favorites. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, more information on the disappearance of Michael Vaughn may be released today. When and where you can tune in. Plus, an outside investigator looking into the Boise Police Department. A look ahead at that investigation and when we may hear more. Plus, lava flow in Hawaii slowing down when experts expect the eruption on the state's largest island to stop. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. 
Good morning everybody on this first day of December and we're seeing temperatures a little bit warmer than what we've seen. We're seeing warm air getting trapped below the clouds and this rain that we're seeing 42 degrees at 6 a.m. and 42 degrees expected at 7 a.m. will drop to 40 degrees at 8 a.m. but much warmer than what we've seen over the past couple of days. We've seen some lows in the 20s last week. 42 degrees here in Boise right now. We're continuing to see rain this morning. A southerly wind of about six miles an hour with that wind chill dropping that feels like temperature down to 38 degrees. Now looking outside we are seeing some rain here in Boise a light to moderate rain and then up in the foothills we are seeing a little bit of snow and in Emmett they are seeing some rain as well. The chance of precipitation here in the valley will drop off as we head into Friday and then we'll see that that rain start to make its return on Sunday. Taking a look at temperatures 43 degrees in Boise, 41 in Emmett and 43 in Nampa and Caldwell, 40 degrees expected over in Ontario and up in the mountains 32 degrees in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And on this wet start to our Thursday morning, starting to see some more cars on the road. But like Vasily mentioned, roads are wet. Keep that in mind on your morning commute. And other than that, not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car to start your day, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. We'll be learning from the Fruitland Police Chief about the Michael Vaughn case later today. The Chief's News Conference is set for 1 o'clock. We will interrupt programming to bring it to you live right here on CBS2. We'll also stream it live on IdahoNews.com and the CBS2 Facebook page. Now you'll recall early last month, police made the arrest in a case. In this case, this is Sarah Wandra. She was taken into custody. Her home searched and her backyard dug up. Now we hope to hear what, if anything, was found in that search. The house just a few minutes away from Michael's home. Now, Michael, he disappeared in the summer of 2021. He was just five years old at the time. Again, we'll get this update this afternoon at one o'clock. You can watch it live right here on CBS2 and IdahoNews.com. People across Idaho gathering overnight to remember the four murdered University of Idaho students. Candlelight vigils held from Moscow to Pocatello to right here in Boise. Idaho doesn't experience violence like this very often. Um, it's, it's grieving for people who maybe didn't even know the victims. It's, it's, uh, it's a very, very strong and powerful feeling for many. Dozens showing up to the University of Idaho Boise campus to honor the four U of I students, Zanna, Ethan, Kaylee, and Madison. Others showed their support in different ways. The Boise and West Ada School Districts both turning their stadium lights in solidarity with the University of Idaho. Even in Pocatello, more than 550 miles away from Moscow, Idaho State University students coming together for a candlelight vigil. You can see the tweet right here saying, hundreds of miles apart, but still united, Vandal Strong. It really shows how much we care truly about each other. And when they say that we are one big family, we truly are one big family. Tomorrow, friends and family of the students killed are invited to a celebration of life that will be at Real Life Ministries in Post Falls, Idaho. Well, Boise bringing in an outside investigator to look into the activities of former Boise Police Captain Matt Bringleson. He was recently associated with a racist organization. We need to know whether racist ideology has tainted policing, hiring and promotions, internal investigations, and community interactions in any way. Boise Police Chief Ron Weiniger says hiring police officers, it's a robust process and they do what they can to learn about the officers during their background checks. The one thing we can't necessarily maybe get into is inside their head to know what they think other than what they share with us in response to questions, psychological evaluations. Um, we have uh, other tools available, the polygraph. By next week, we should know how much that independent investigation will cost. Mayor McLean hoping the report and recommendations at will at least offer guidance in hiring a new permanent police chief. CBS2 will keep you updated on the investigation and its results. Well, this morning, Boise police still needing your help finding a young girl. Take a look at this photo. They're hoping someone out there knows who she is. Officers say they just want to make sure she's okay. They got a concerning report about her. Now this is a surveillance photo from of her from Friday. If you think you know who she is, call BPD. 
Well, a family in California is sharing a warning about the dangers of catfishing. They say it's far too easy to deceive people online. You may recall the triple murder in Riverside, California earlier this week. Police say the killer posed as a teenage boy online and drove across the country to meet a 15 year old girl that he tricked and lied to. He then killed her mother and grandparents before setting the house on fire and kidnapping the girl. Catfishing led to the deaths of the three most important people in my life. My dad, my mom, and my sister. Please, parents, guardians, when you are talking to your children about the dangers of their online actions, please use us as a reference. Police are affirming their stance that the Riverside teenager is a victim and was unaware of the killer's intentions while they were communicating online. Oh, well, turning to developing news, lava from the world's largest volcano, it's slowing down. Scientists saying the terrain is what's keeping that flow slow and steady. And as it gets further away from the vent, that molten goo cooling quite a bit faster. Now still, it'll be some time before this eruption is officially over. We expect this flow to keep going. Most Mauna Loa flows like this last for two to three weeks. The highway is our immediate concern right now. That's Ken Hahn. He's a scientist in charge of the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. He says at the current flow rate, the soonest the lava could get to that road is in the next two days, but he says it'll likely take longer. He also said the lava could change direction and not reach the highway at all. We'll, of course, keep you updated. Well, the De Oregon Department of Transportation hopes to have a highway back open today. Take a look at this. A landslide is blocking the lanes on Highway 30. They say heavy rain is to blame. That slide even taking a semi truck with it. Thankfully, that driver is OK. Meantime, a different hazard is keeping ODOT crews busy. We've got the plows out there. It's, it's, it looks like it's melting out there. The best winter maintenance tool that we've got is a little sunshine and, and daylight, and that, that'll do well if we can get some good temperatures this morning. Dan Hamilton with the Oregon Department of Transportation says they have all their winter tools available, working to keep I-84 as clear as possible. However, officials add there is a nationwide shortage of road crew staff, so you can expect plowing to take a little longer when those winter storms hit. Well, before we get to weather, if you haven't already, dust off your boots and your board because Bogus Basin announcing their daily operations beginning as of today. Now, Bogus started a soft opening as of last week. They also plan to start night operations on December 9th. Oh, I'm so excited for night mm -hmm. operations. It's beautiful up there at night. You know, you have the freshly groomed snow. Normally they do another pass mm -hmm. before yeah. they open up for the night, but it's a beautiful experience and ex awesome. yeah, excited for it. Mm -hmm. And I guess excited that uh, it's a little warmer this morning, mm -hmm. at least here in our lower elevations. Yeah, at the lower elevations, we're seeing a little bit warmer temperatures, temperatures in the 40s this morning, and we're gonna see temperatures around there for throughout the morning, but we'll see temperatures start to drop off as we head into the afternoon. We'll see that cold Arctic air move in and replace that milder air we're dealing with right now. 39 degrees at 9 a.m. That'll jump up to 41 around 11 and 42 degrees around one o'clock, but around 3 p.m. is where we're gonna see temperatures start to drop as that cold air moves in, and we'll see temperatures drop all the way down to 34 degrees at 7 p.m. Now we do have a winter weather or a winter storm warning in effect for all the areas in pink, the West Central Mountains and over in the Boise Mountains, all expected to get another six to 10 inches of snow today. And that winter storm warning is in effect through Friday morning. Now we are seeing that milder air start to move out of the region and we're going to see more cold air move into the region from the Arctic. That's going to cool down temperatures into the mid 30s and could turn some rain into snow as we head into the afternoon. We're going to continue to see snowfall over in the mountains, the longest sustained snowfall we've seen this season, and we'll see some rain in the Treasure Valley throughout the uh, day today. And then heading into tomorrow, we'll see mostly sunny skies tomorrow into, fr uh, into Friday and into Saturday as well. Now we do have a cool down on its way. Temperature is going to drop down to 34 degrees on Friday, 35 degrees expected on Saturday, and then we'll drop down to 33 degrees on Sunday and 31 degrees expected on Monday. So some chilly temperatures on our way. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in a few minutes. 
and that rain in the Treasure Valley today is something mm -hmm. to keep an eye on. Yeah, especially for tomorrow because we'll have a lower temperature tomorrow and that's going to cause some freezing on some roads. So be aware of that when you get out on the road tomorrow. Definitely want to be extra careful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long and taking a look out there this morning, starting to see some more folks on the road. And as you can see, those roads are wet. So keep that in mind when you get in your car this morning and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. All right, it's time for our question of the day. That question, just 7% of people say it's never acceptable to do this on an airplane. 7% well, is so low. I'm thinking leaning your chair back in, oh, into people. I mean, some people may That's not like that, but some people want to do that. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sure. What do you guys think? It's so low. My first reaction before I really thought about how low it was, was taking off your shoes on the plane. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. What do you think, Ashley? Oh, everything I am thinking of, I think more than 7% of people yeah. would find unacceptable, but maybe um, keeping your window shade up. Oh, Some uh -huh. people like yeah, it's a great having guess. them all down, keeping it dark. Mm -hmm. Yep. Unless you have that, when you have the high beams on, the sunshine just mm -hmm. poking through. Yeah. yeah, you gotta close that thing. Doug, hey, yeah, go with you. <laughs> please <Can> don't <laughs> do this. Take your shoes off <laughs> on an airplane. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Doug. Joe says clapping. <laughs> oh, when that's you a land. great guess. I that's didn't a great think answer. about that. I don't know if yeah. I've ever experienced that, to oh, be I've honest. It <laughs> All right, let's see what else. Wendy says asking, are we there yet? <laughs> oh, that's a great answer. Oh my God. Sometimes you're really thinking it, but you just don't say it out loud. <laughs> oh my gosh, I like it. All right, guys. Yeah, no, some good creative guesses. Let's keep those juices flowing. You still have an hour and 15 minutes to get those guesses in. You can do that by heading to our Facebook or our Twitter. We'll read some more of your guesses and reveal the answer right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News, what do you call a toy store that doesn't charge you for the toys? Well, we call that a great opportunity to pay it forward. Take a look inside Christmas Toy Store. CBS 2 Adventure Weather showing you local forecasts across the gym. Stay over in Weezer, 39 degrees with scattered showers today. That'll drop to 22 degrees overnight. And then tomorrow, partly cloudy skies at the height of 34 degrees over in Weezer. Moving over to Cascade, 32 degrees and snow showers today. That'll drop to 8 degrees tonight. And then tomorrow, 23 degrees and partly cloudy skies in Cascade. Pay It Forward is sponsored by Mountain America Credit Union. Well, this week's Pay It Forward goes to the woman who's the driving force behind the Christmas toy store at St. Vincent de Paul's. They call it a store, but there's no charge for the toys. They're free to families in need. Our very own Brent Hunsaker gives us a look. Joy the triumph of the skies. With a choir from Bishop Kelly. And free pizza. St. Vincent de Paul welcomes everyone to its Christmas toy store in Boise. To get to this night took a lot of work by a lot of volunteers. So they would check in here at our check-in station. And leading them all for the last six years is Katie Boyer. All right, so where are we going to put a tree? On this day, Katie directs the setup of the Christmas toy store in Nampa. There's plugs somewhere. The Grinch's decoration, not a gift. Something to surprise and delight the kids. The who's down in who Katie got her love of giving from her parents. This is mom, this is Mary. It's a tradition they carry on together. Without my parents, this wouldn't be happening. <laughs> they shop with me all year, they price everything, they work the phones, we have our call center, how do you register, my mom's on it daily. My mom and dad have always given me a great Christmas, so I just wanna share the love. This is the first time that Katie has put a store at the Idaho Job Corps campus. It's a good location, but more importantly, it gives Job Corps students an opportunity to volunteer. 
These types of give back programs where they're helping other people are the ones that they enjoy the most because they actually see the benefit directly to people in their community. And it's uh, arranged by age and gender all the way around the store. From newborn to 18 years of age. It's a lot of electronics. We do a lot of Bluetooth uh, speakers, headphones, gaming headsets. Nerf guns are really popular. There are also practical gifts like gloves and hats and even free gift wrapping. Those are great. Everything in the yes. store is either donated or bought with donations to St. Vincent de Paul. Set of hats and gloves from um, Brighton Group. For this labor of love, Katie is about to get a $500 pay it forward from Mountain America Credit Union. Hi Katie, Hi. my name's Andy, I'm from Mountain America Credit Union, and I came here on this amazing day of your guys' grand opening to talk to you and thank you for all the work that you've done to bring about gifts not only for young, but for teenagers who a lot of times during the holidays are forgotten. Yes. And so we just want to come by and give you a little gift from oh, Mountain America Credit Union thank to you. you. Please open it up and show us what you got. Okay. It's easy. Just wait. <laughs> We wanted to pay it forward to you and your wow. community, so thank okay. you for everything you do. <laughs> thank you so very much. Katie already has plans for the cash. I think this is pretty great. She says it will help provide a Merry Christmas for a family that the Boyers are sponsoring this year. Bye, Merry Christmas. Magnifying our gift into many gifts. That's the spirit of Pay It Forward. Such Love a it. heartwarming story. I know. Our yeah. hearts are warm. That's good news because, yeah, chilly out there this morning. Not as cold as it could be, guys, because, yeah. yeah. Cold front is headed our way. Yeah, cold front headed our way. That's going to drop those low temperatures back down to the 20s and even on into the teens on some days. But today we're seeing temperatures in the 40s this morning, but we are also seeing rain this morning and it's going to continue on throughout the morning. Right now in Boise, we're seeing light to moderate rainfall throughout the region over in Meridian. That rainfall is a little bit stronger over in Emmett. They're also seeing some rain and then we're seeing some snowfall in between Caldwell and Ontario over on I-84. It's accumulating just a little bit. Not too much to impact the morning commute, but it will still be wet out there. And we're not seeing too much freezing as those temperatures are above that freezing point. Now we're going to continue to see low pressure move in, pushing that mild air out of the region. And we're going to see temperatures staying in the 40s throughout the morning as we continue to see rainfall. And then we'll continue to see that sustained snowfall over in the mountain areas. And then we'll start to see it clear up as we head into Friday. We'll see mostly sunny skies on Friday. And then we'll see some more clouds return on Saturday. But Friday going to be mostly sunny skies, but we'll continue to see those temperatures dropping into the mid 30s. Now the frost freeze course forecast will be important over the next couple of days, especially over the next two days. We will see some freezing out on the roads due to that that wetness continuing to stick around. So we'll see that start to freeze as temperatures drop below the freezing line. Now taking a look at temperatures over the next seven days, 34 degrees expected tomorrow. That'll jump to 35 on Saturday and then 33 on Sunday, 31 degrees expected on Monday and Tuesday next week. And we'll drop all the way down to 29 degrees next Wednesday. And then moving over the mountains, we'll see temperatures drop to 23 degrees on Friday, 29 degrees expected on Saturday and 30 degrees expected on Sunday. Then we'll drop back down into the twenties as we head into early next week, but take a look at those lows. Single digit lows on multiple different days this week over in the mountains. In the Treasure Valley, we'll see temperatures in the low 20s overnight, and we could even drop into the teens on some days. Some very chilly overnight lows heading to mm -hmm. our friends in the mountains. Yeah, we're having some cold Arctic air moving in, dropping temperatures not only in the mountains, but here in the Treasure Valley as well. Yes, time to bundle mm -hmm. up if you haven't started already, which I think most of us have. Most of us already <laughs> have, yes. Yeah, thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long and looking like a smooth start to the morning. Start to see some more cars out there, but no traffic backups that we're seeing and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, British royals crossing the pond for the first time since the death of the Queen. Their itinerary that includes a meeting with the President. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 553. Welcome back. Parts of Boston lit up green overnight with British Royals William and Catherine in town presenting a major environmental award. It's set for later this week. 
But the couples, it's their first trip to the U.S. since the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. Michael George, he's in Boston with more on the royal visit, which will include a meeting with the commander in chief. It was a royal welcome for the Prince and Princess of Wales Wednesday on their first U.S. visit in eight years. Here to present the Earthshot Prize, which honors environmentalists. They kicked off the trip by helping turn Boston City Hall green. Catherine and I are absolutely delighted to be with you today for our first engagement in the great city of Boston. The couple also took in an NBA game courtside, watching the Boston Celtics beat the Miami Heat. Some locals spent much of the day just trying to catch a glimpse. Is it exciting to have the Royals here in Boston? Oh, it's very exciting. Very exciting. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm hoping they come over and we can like say hi to them. The Prince and Princess decided to present the Earthshot Prize here in Boston partially because it was home to President John F. Kennedy. William has said Kennedy's famous moonshot speech was his inspiration for launching the award. Boston was also the obvious choice because your universities, research centers, and vibrant startup scene make you a global leader in science, innovation, and boundless ambition. This is also the couple's first trip to the U.S. since Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, gave up their royal duties and relocated to California. This is a really important few days for the Waleses to get their message over about what the royal family is for, what working members of the royal family are for, the good that they can do. The White House says President Biden plans to meet with the prince and princess in Boston tomorrow, though the details are still being worked out. Michael George, CBS News, Boston. Now, William and Kate, they're set to visit a climate technology incubator just outside the city of Boston later today. They'll then host a star-studded event tomorrow night to hand out awards worth more than a million dollars to climate change entrepreneurs. Well, one more piece of news to share with you before you go. Take a look at this. Santa Claus traded in his boots and sack full of presents for flippers and an oxygen tank at an aquarium. The Jolly Diver swam in a tunnel tank containing around 3,000 fish and dolphins. Definitely a fun way to kick off the Christmas season. Yeah, they needed some presents too. Yeah. Well, coming up next on CBS 2 News this morning, an outside investigator looking into the Boise Police Department. A look ahead at the investigation and when we may hear more. Plus, first snow and now a landslide causing headaches in Oregon this morning when this highway is set to reopen. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, more information on the disappearance of Michael Vaughn may be released today when and where you can tune in. Plus, remembering the four Idaho students killed in Moscow, how communities across the state are mourning the lives lost. Plus, lava flow in Hawaii slowing down when experts expect the eruption on the state's largest island to stop. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning, thank you for joining us, folks. Yeah, waking up this morning in a new month. It is December 1st, 2022, Thursday. And yeah, a little wet start to that as well. I'm Sarah Jacobson. <laughs> I'm Ashley Carter and Vasily. With a new month comes yeah. a change in weather, not so much. Yeah, we're going to see a little bit of a change in weather right now. We're seeing warmer temperatures this morning, but that will change into tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll see temperatures drop back down into the 20s. But when you start out your day today, you're going to see temperatures in the 40s, 39 degrees out right now, but we'll jump to 41 degrees around 7 o'clock. And then at 8 o'clock, we'll drop back down to 40 degrees. So temperatures in the high 30s to low 40s throughout the morning. Temperatures right now 
now around 39 degrees and we're going to we have an easterly wind of about 13 miles per hour that's dropping that feels like temperature down to 31 degrees so feels a little bit chillier than it is out there and we're continuing to see wetness out there right now we are seeing some light to moderate rain around the treasure valley and we're also seeing a little bit of snowfall between ontario and caldwell right now now the chances of precipitation will drop off as we head into friday and then sunday is where our next best chance at seeing some scattered showers around the valley that'll be in sunday morning and on sunday night now moving to temperatures today 42 degrees in boise 40 in mountain home and 42 in emmett caldwell and over in nampa 40 degrees in ontario and then up in the mountains 32 degrees in mccall Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KVOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And on this Thursday morning, just keep in mind that rain that Vasily mentioned around the Treasure Valley and that snowfall between Caldwell and Ontario if you're headed that direction. As you can see in the cameras, the roads are wet this morning, so keep that in mind. Give yourself some extra time to get to your destination. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. We'll be hearing more from the Fruitland Police Chief about Michael Vaughn, his case later today. The Chief's news conference, it's set for one o'clock. We will interrupt programming to bring it to you live right here on CBS2. We'll also be streaming it live on IdahoNews.com and the CBS2 Facebook page. You'll recall early last month, police made an arrest in the case. That's Sarah Wandra. She was taken into custody, her home searched, and her backyard dug up. We hope to hear what, if anything, was found in that search. That house just a few minutes away from Michael's home. And Michael, he disappeared in the summer of 2021. He was just five years old at the time. Again, we will get an update this afternoon. You can watch it live beginning at 1 o'clock right here on CBS2 and IdahoNews.com. Well, people across Idaho gathering overnight to remember the four murdered University of Idaho students. Candlelight vigils held from Moscow to Pocatello to right here in Boise. Idaho doesn't experience violence like this very often. Um, it's, it's grieving for people who maybe didn't even know the victims. It's, it's, uh, it's a very, very strong and powerful feeling for many. Dozens showing up to the University of Idaho Boise campus to honor the four U of I students, Zanna, Ethan, Kaylee, and Madison. Others showed their support in different ways. The Boise and West Ada school districts turning on their stadium lights in solidarity with the University of Idaho. Even in Pocatello, more than 50, 550 miles from Moscow, Idaho State University students coming together for a candlelight vigil. You can see this tweet here saying hundreds of miles apart, but still united, Vandal Strong. It really shows how much we care truly about each other. And when they say that we are one big family, we truly are one big family. Tomorrow, friends and family of the students killed are invited to a celebration of life. That will be at Real Life Ministries in Post Falls, Idaho. Well, Boise bringing in an outside investigator to look into the activities of former Boise Police Captain Matt Bringleson. Now, recently, he was associated with a racist organization. We need to know whether racist ideology has tainted policing, hiring and promotions, internal investigations, and community interactions in any way. Boise Police Chief Ron Weiniger says hiring police officers, it's a robust process, and they do what they can to learn about the background of each new officer coming in. The one thing we can't necessarily maybe get into is inside their head to know what they think other than what they share with us in response to questions, psychological evaluations. Um, we have uh, other tools available, the polygraph. By next week, we should know how much that independent investigation will cost taxpayers. Mayor McLean hoping the report and recommendations will then offer guidance in hiring a new permanent chief for the Boise Police Department. Of course, CBS2 will keep you updated on the investigation and its results. And Boise Police, they need your help finding a little girl. Take a look at this photo. They're hoping someone out there might know who she is. Police aren't releasing any names, but says officers just want to make sure she's okay. They got a concerning report about her. Now, this is a surveillance photo from her back on Friday. If you think you know who she is, give a call to Boise Police. To developing news this morning, lava from the world's largest volcano slowing down. Now, scientists say the terrain is what's keeping the flow slow and steady. 
And as it gets further away from the vent, the molten goo in turn cooling faster. Still, it'll be some time before the eruption is over. We expect this flow to keep going. Most Mauna Loa flows like this last for two to three weeks. The highway is our immediate concern right now. That's Ken Hahn. He's a scientist in charge at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. He says at the current flow rate, the soonest the lava would get to that road is over the next two days, but he says it'll likely take longer as it cools. He also said the lava could change direction and not reach the highway at all. Well, the Oregon Department of Transportation hopes to have a highway back open today. Take a look at this. A landslide is blocking the lanes on Highway 30. They say heavy rain is to blame. That slide even taking a semi truck with it. Thankfully, though, that driver is OK. Meantime, a different hazard is keeping ODOT crews busy. We've got the plows out there. It's, it's, it looks like it's melting out there. The best winter maintenance tool that we've got is a little sunshine and, and daylight, and that, that'll do well if we can get some good temperatures this morning. Dan Hamilton with the Oregon Department of Transportation says they have all of their winter tools available, working to keep I-84 as clear as possible. However, officials add there is a nationwide shortage of road crew staff, so you can expect plowing to take a little longer when those winter storms hit. Well, speaking of winter storms, Bogus Basin announcing their daily operations kicking off today. Now, Bogus did start with a soft opening last weekend. It was the earliest in 27 years. They also plan to start their night operations on December 9th. Yeah, good time. Um, at least this morning, though, it's feeling pretty nice out there mm -hmm, as yeah. you're stepping out. But yeah, it's going to be a little rainy. Yeah, rainy here and some snow over in the mountains. So much snow that in Idaho City Basin School District has canceled school today. Mm -hmm. So snow day for those kids over in the Basin School District in Idaho City. When you head out the door here in Boise, we are going to see some rain here in Boise throughout the morning. But temperatures warmer than what they've been. 39 degrees at 9 a.m. That'll jump up to 41 degrees around 11 o'clock and 42 by 1 o'clock and then we're going to see temperatures start to drop off throughout the day as Arctic air moves in 34 degrees expected at 7 p.m. Now we do have a winter storm warning in effect for all these areas in pink. The West Central Mountains and the Boise Mountains can expect 6 to 10 inches of snow over the the day today and then all these areas in purple have a winter storm watch in effect. Now we're seeing mild air moving out of the region and we're going to see more cold air move into the region. That's why we're going to see those temperatures drop throughout the day today and we'll see some rain change to snow, especially over on the foothills. Now taking a look at Futurecast, we are seeing rain throughout the day today and we'll continue to see that snowfall throughout the day as well. That should start to trail off Thursday evening and then we're going to see clouds throughout the night tonight and and then tomorrow we'll see mostly sunny skies throughout the day, but those temperatures will drop into the mid 30s and that'll stay in the mid 30s throughout the next couple of days. Now, taking a look at the seven day forecast for you, 42 to 43 degrees will be the temperature today. That'll, then we'll see temperatures start to drop as we head throughout the weekend. 34 degrees expected on Friday, 35 degrees expected on Saturday, and then we'll see temperatures drop all the way down to 33 degrees on Sunday and 31 degrees expected on Monday. So that cold Arctic air moving in, dropping down those temperatures, and we're going to see temperatures stay there into early next week. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Well, we've mentioned it the past couple weeks, but that roller coaster ride just keeps on yeah, going. Yeah, keeps on going. We're seeing that cold Arctic air moving in. That's dropping down temperatures and those overnight lows dropping into the low 20s and even the teens here in the Treasure Valley. So buckle up. The roller coaster just keeps on going. <laughs> yep, and, and definitely bundle up as well. Yes, and Vasily will keep you updated on what to expect. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KVOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this rainy Thursday morning, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center to see how our conditions are looking this morning. The drive uh, so far so good, despite the wet weather, the uh, standing water issue, as opposed to uh, snow or ice, but uh, you gotta watch out a little bit. The hydroplaning, that's not fun. Uh, both hands on the wheel, probably want to watch your following distance and speeds a little more so this morning, as opposed to a dry morning anyway. But a very quiet start. It's light traffic freeways and other spots. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan.
Thank you, Ron. And when you get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. CBS 2's Great Idaho Food Drive is sponsored by Les Schwab, TDS Fiber, Two Men in a Truck, and News Talk KBOI. CBS 2 is working with local businesses to help those struggling to afford food. Now you can help by donating to the Great Idaho Food Drive. It runs through December 9th. Now everything goes right to the Idaho Food Bank. They need non-perishable food items, things like canned protein, fruits and vegetables, soups and stews, whole grain pastas, rice and cereal. You can drop off those donations at any Treasure Valley Les Schwab Tire Center or TDS Fiber or even right here at CBS 2 Studios. That's in downtown Boise. We're also asking for monetary donations. You can find that through a link on IdahoNews.com. And all donations are local. Well, straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, working to stop another potential problem for our economy. The bill now on its way to the Senate days before workers are set to strike. Plus, the Fed set to raise interest rates once again. Why they say a slowdown, but not a full stop, is on the horizon. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Over 30% of these, they'll happen between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. Ashley got it right. The answer, engagements. That time of year. Yes, it is. Now for today's question. 7% of people say it's never acceptable to do this on an airplane. All right, folks, what do you think it is? CBS 2 Adventure Weather showing you a local forecast across the gym. Stay over and pay it. 40 degrees and scattered showers today. That'll drop to 23 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 36 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected over and pay it. Moving to McCall, 31 degrees and snow showers expected today. That'll drop to 7 degrees overnight with cloudy skies and then tomorrow partly cloudy skies and 23 degrees in McCall. No, thank you, Vasily. Well, the Idaho City Space and School District, they're closing classes and the school for today. It's a snow day. But they say the hazardous road conditions and the forecast of possibly freezing rain and snow throughout the day, they just want to make it safer for those to stay home. Well, the White House hosting its first state dinner of the Biden administration tonight with the president and first lady welcoming French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife Bridget. The dinner was inspired by the red, white and blue of both countries' flags. Jill Biden said the menu is an expression of welcome and friendship. New Orleans musician John Batiste is providing the entertainment for the dinner. And lawmakers in Washington took a major step Wednesday towards preventing a potential railroad strike set for next week. The House voted to use congressional power to block a strike, and now that bill moves to the Senate. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has more on what's at stake. With a lot riding on the rails, the House of Representatives said no on Wednesday to a potential railroad strike. The joint resolution is passed. In an overwhelming vote, the House approved a plan to force railroad companies and their unionized workers to stick to a settlement brokered by the Biden administration back in September. It was later rejected by some unions. Today, we are here to safeguard the financial security of America's families to protect American economy as it continues to recover and avert a devastating nationwide rail shutdown. Business groups say the strike could cost the U.S. economy $2 billion every day and put the brakes on shipments of commodities like coal and lumber, even holiday gifts. President Biden has urged Congress to act, frustrating his union allies. The president believes uh, that a bill uh, averting a, a rail strike needs to reach his desk by this weekend. I respectfully disagree with him and how he's going about doing this because what he's doing is taking away the member's right to strike. The bill needs to be approved by the Senate first, which will also take up a separate measure passed by House Democrats that would add seven days of paid sick time to the agreement, which some unions have been fighting for. This last second desperate move to add paid sick leave is un. It's, it's unprecedented congressional intervention. If the government doesn't block the strike, the railroads could grind to a halt next Friday. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. That tentative agreement reached in September would give railroad workers a 24% raise over five years. 
Well, in a big speech in Washington yesterday, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell saying the Fed may still raise interest rates higher, but the pace of those hikes could slow as soon as this month. Now, Powell says there's some good news on inflation. He's predicting the price of housing and rent will decrease over the next year. But he's also acknowledging the country has, quote, a long way to go in the fight to stop inflation. They say with a hot, hot labor market and the price of services like dining out and travel continuing to rise. Speaking of rising temperatures, if you're at least in the Treasure Valley mm -hmm. stepping out the door this morning, you'll notice it's quite a bit warmer. Yeah, quite a bit warmer outside. Yeah. For the past couple of days, we've seen temperatures in the low 30s and even in the 20s. Right now, we're sitting at about 39 degrees outside right now, and we're going to continue to stay there throughout the morning before we start to cool off as we head into the afternoon. Taking a look outside right now, we are seeing some rain throughout the Treasure Valley right now and in some areas at higher elevations where the temperature is high or is low lower we are seeing a little bit of snowfall there so we are seeing some snowfall in between Caldwell and Ontario and we're seeing this low pressure system move into the region and that's pushing out that milder air and bringing in colder temperatures to us here in the Treasure Valley and so future cast showing us we're going to see rain throughout much of the morning and into the afternoon here in the Treasure Valley but then we'll start to clear up we could see a little bit of snowfall just east of Boise as temperatures start to drop into the evening we're going to see partly cloudy skies into the evening and then we'll start to clear up as we head into Friday. Friday we'll see mostly sunny skies but temperatures will drop into the mid 30s and we're going to stay there as we head into the weekend. We'll see more partly cloudy skies on Saturday and on Sunday but we need to keep aware of the frost freeze forecast. We are going to see temperatures drop below 28 degrees causing a hard freeze of any kind of liquid on the ground so be aware of that. Could affect the Friday morning commute. 34 degrees expected on Friday. That'll jump to 35 degrees on Saturday and then 33 degrees expected on Sunday. Monday we'll see temperatures at 31 degrees on Monday and Tuesday and we'll see mostly cloudy skies Sunday, Monday and Tuesday and then moving over to the mountains temperatures dropping into the single digits overnight on multiple different days. We'll see temperatures at 23 degrees on Friday, 29 on Saturday and 30 degrees on Sunday. Ooh, some cool overnight temperatures yeah. and after that kind of warm tease today mm -hmm. some much cooler temperatures. Headed yeah, we've way. seen some warmer temperatures over the past couple of days, but now we're seeing that Arctic air moving in, cooling down temperatures, not only here in the Treasure Valley, but over in the mountains as well. Going to start feeling like December mm -hmm. even more. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center to see how our roads are looking. Well, it's a wet one, that's for sure. With the uh, rain coming down and standing water could be an issue, but uh, it's uh, probably a little better than snow and ice, but you still got to be careful. Uh, things moving fine. Don't have the uh, buildups quite yet. A little more volume. You might crowd up in the uh, next little while, though. Merge areas, that'll start to kick in. But all in all, we're starting off quiet, even routes away from the freeways this time of the morning, running pretty light. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. And when you get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS2 News this morning, the season of giving may also be taking a hit from higher costs. Why organizations working to collect donations this holiday season say they're not giving up hope. And later, an emotional evening here in Idaho. A look at how the community is gathering to remember the University of Idaho students murdered in Moscow. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Well, inflation is impacting just about everything this holiday season, including the giving spirit. Marley Ginter shares the effect we're seeing this season of giving. Chandelier Kemp takes pride in ringing that Salvation Army bell. Merry Christmas. But this year, donations are tight as everyone pays more for everything from groceries to gas. Sometimes the kids get mad at their mothers and say, I want to put money in the kettle, but they don't have it at the time. And they be like, we'll come back. <laughs> Does it worry you that you might not be able to cut it this year? Absolutely. 
So when we're not able to raise the money that we need to raise, the reality is we have to make the tough decision of what are we not going to help with this year. Captain Larry Carmichael says inflation has hit them hard, but like other nonprofits, they're not losing hope. The latest YOLO community donor survey shows giving remains strong, with 55% saying they'll donate the same as they did last year. 25% said they'll donate even more, and only 14% said they'll donate less. People right now are stressed over how much more they're paying. How mm -hmm. is that trickling down to our charities? Well, if Giving Tuesday, which uh, obviously took place um, yesterday, is any indication, uh, there was not a decrease in donations. Carrie Wood, CEO of the Sacramento Region Community Foundation, says in times of need, she sees more people donating to nonprofits that provide the basics, like food, shelter, and housing needs. Um, especially, you know, knowing that their their fellow humans are, you know, uh, some are suffering now, some are having some challenging times. Jana Lear knows challenging times, now out here to help others. Like I done been homeless, slept in a car before, I done been through a lot too. So for me doing this, it feels real great to know that there's a lot of things out here that can help people. Idaho's largest toy drive is sponsored by Idaho Central Credit Union, Big O Tires, and Bronco Motors. Well, the holidays are almost here, and that's why CBS2 and Newstalk KBOI were teaming up for Idaho's largest toy drive. Now, all the toys donated during this drive, they go to the Marine Corps' Toys for Tots. Now, you can drop off any new unwrapped toy or book at any of the white Toys for Tots boxes you see across the community or at our big collection spot at Sportsman's Warehouse. It's their parking lot on Fairview in Meridian across from the village at Meridian. That toy drive, it ends next Tuesday. December 6th. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News, first snow and now a landslide causing headaches in Oregon this morning when this highway is set to reopen. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, more information on the disappearance of Michael Vaughn may be released today. When and where you can tune in. Plus, an outside investigator looking into the Boise Police Department. A look ahead at the investigation and when we may hear more. Plus, lava flow in Hawaii slowing down when experts expect the eruption on the state's largest island to stop. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning, everybody. On this first morning in December, and we are seeing abnormally warm temperatures this morning, 41 degrees at 7 a.m., and that'll drop to 40 degrees around 8 a.m. Taking a look outside right now, we're seeing temperatures around 38 degrees, and we do have a little bit of a wind out there, an easterly wind of about 11 miles an hour, carrying about an 8-degree wind chill, dropping that feels like temperature down to 30 degrees this morning. Now, taking a look outside, we are seeing some rain continuing here in Boise and and in Meridian, we're seeing a, a moderate rain there. And we are seeing a little bit of snowfall as your elevation starts to get higher. Over in Emmett, we're seeing some rain, but the more north you go, the more snow you are going to see. Now, the chances of precipitation here in the Treasure Valley, we're going to drop off on precipitation on Friday, but we could see that precipitation start to return Saturday night and into Sunday. Sunday morning and Sunday night, we have a chance of precipitation here in the valley. 42 degrees in Boise, Emmett, Caldwell, and over in Nampa. 40 degrees expected in Mountain Home and over in Ontario, then up in the mountains, 32 degrees in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And on this wet start to our Thursday morning, everything looking smooth out there, starting to see some more cars on the road. Just be cautious of that water on the roads. As Ron mentioned earlier, you don't want to hydroplane, so keep that in mind. Give yourself some extra time. And not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, we'll be hearing from the Fruitland Police Chief about the Michael Vaughn case later today. Now, the Chief's News Conference is set for 1 o'clock. We'll interrupt programming to bring it to you live right here on CBS2. We'll also be streaming it live on IdahoNews.com and the CBS2 Facebook page. Now you'll recall just 
Early last month, police made an arrest in the case. This is Sarah Wandra. She was taken into custody, her home searched, and her backyard dug up. We hope to hear what, if anything, was found in that search. That house just a few minutes away from Michael's home. And Michael disappeared back in the summer of 2021. He was just five years old at the time. Again, we will update you this afternoon. You can watch it live beginning at 1 o'clock right here on CBS2 and IdahoNews.com. Well, people across Idaho gathering overnight to remember the four murdered University of Idaho students. Candlelight vigils held from Moscow to Pocatello to right here in Boise. Idaho doesn't experience violence like this very often. Um, it's, it's grieving for people who maybe didn't even know the victims. It's, it's, uh, it's a very, very strong and powerful feeling for many. Dozens showing up to the University of Idaho Boise campus to honor the four U of I students, Zanna, Ethan, Kaylee, and Madison. Others showed their support in different ways. The Boise and West Ada school districts turning on their stadium lights in solidarity with the University of Idaho. And even in Pocatello, more than 550 miles from Moscow, Idaho State University students coming together for a candlelight vigil. You can see this tweet here saying hundreds of miles apart, but still united, Vandal Strong. It really shows how much we care truly about each other. And when they say that we are one big family, we truly are one big family. Tomorrow, friends and family of the students killed are invited to a celebration of life. It will be at Real Life Ministries in Post Falls, Idaho. Boise bringing in an, in, an outside investigator to look at the activities of the former ble Boise Police Captain Matt Bringelson, who was recently associated with a racist organization. We need to know whether racist ideology has tainted policing, hiring and promotions, internal investigations, and community interactions in any way. Boise Police Chief Ron Weiniger saying hiring police officers, it's a robust process and they do what they can to learn about the background of each new officer. The one thing we can't necessarily maybe get into is inside their head to know what they think other than what they share with us in response to questions, psychological evaluations. Um, we have uh, other tools available, the polygraph. By next week, we should know how much that independent investigation will cost taxpayers. Mayor McLean, in the meantime, hoping that this report and recommendations will help offer guidance in hiring a permanent new police chief. CBS2 will keep you updated on the investigation and its results. And Boise Police, they need your help finding a young girl. Take a look at this photo we're about to show you. They're hoping someone out there may know who she is. Officers just want to make sure she's okay after they say they got a concerning report about her. This is a surveillance video of her from Brack on Friday. If you think you know who she is, give a call to Boise Police. Turning to developing news, lava from the world's largest volcano slowing down. Scientists say the terrain is what's keeping the flow slow and steady. And as it gets further away from the vent, that molten goo cooling a bit faster. Still, it'll be some time before the eruption is officially over. We expect this flow to keep going. Most Mauna Loa flows like this last for two to three weeks. The highway is our immediate concern right now. That's Ken Hahn. He's a scientist in charge at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. He says at the current flow rate, the soonest the lava could get to that road is over the next two days, but it will likely take quite a bit longer. He's also said the lava could change direction and not reach the highway at all. We, of course, will keep you updated. Well, the Oregon Department of Transportation hopes to have a highway back open today. Take a look at this. A landslide is blocking the lanes on Highway 30. They say heavy rain is to blame. The slide even taking a semi truck with it. Thankfully, though, that driver is OK. Meantime, a different hazard is keeping ODOT crews busy. We've got the plows out there. It's, it's, it looks like it's melting out there. The best winter maintenance tool that we've got is a little sunshine and, and daylight, and that, that'll do well if we can hit some good temperatures this morning. Dan Hamilton with the Oregon Department of Transportation says they have all of their winter tools available, working to keep I-84 as clear as possible. However, officials add there is a nationwide shortage of road crew staff, so you can expect plowing to take a little longer when those winter storms hit. 
Well, and speaking of winter storms, if you haven't already, dust off your boots and your board because Bogus Basin announcing daily operations, they kick off today. Now, Bogus did start a soft opening last weekend. They're also planning to start night operations as of December 9th. Yeah, mark your calendars. Mm -hmm. So exciting. Yes, it is. And I know, um, Vasily, you did say yesterday mm -hmm. a chance for some of our mountain peaks getting up to 30 inches. Yeah, over Ooh. the next two days, they're expected Ooh. to get 30 inches. But <laughs> forecasts have shown that we they aren't receiving that much snow right now. We will see it get about 24 inches of snow, but not that predicted 30 in the, at those super high elevations. And we are continuing to see snowfall in the mountains. We're going to see about 6 to 10 inches in the western central mountains and also in the Boise Mountains today. As for temperatures here in the Treasure Valley, we'll see warmer temperatures this morning, but we will start to see that Arctic air move in throughout the day today and drop temperatures through the afternoon and into the evening. 37 degrees expected at 5 p.m. And we'll drop all the way down to 34 degrees at 7 p.m. Now we do have that winter storm warning in effect that could cause up to 12 to 24 inches of snow. That's over yesterday and today we'll see about 6 to 10 inches of snow over in the West Central Mountains and over in the Boise Mountains. Now, we are seeing that milder air this morning, but we'll see it move out as this low pressure system moves in, and it's also going to bring colder temperatures with it. That could turn some rain into snow in some regions, especially just east of Boise and over in the Magic Valley region. They could see just a little bit of snow today. We're going to continue to see sustained snowfall over in the mountains throughout the day today, but by the afternoon and into the evening, we're going to see that snowfall start to dissipate, and we'll see mostly sunny skies as we head into Friday, and that will continue on into Saturday. Saturday. Saturday, we will see a little bit more clouds as we head into the weekend. Now, taking a look at temperatures, a big cool down on its way starting tomorrow. 34 degrees expected as the temperature tomorrow. That'll jump to 35 degrees on Saturday. And then we'll start to see temperatures drop even more as we head into Sunday and into early next week. Sunday expected to be 33 degrees. And then Monday, we can expect temperatures to stay at 31 degrees. So temperatures cooling down over the next couple of days. Right now, we're sticking with that temperature of 40. 42 to 43 degrees as the high, but we'll drop into the mid 30s and even lower as we head into early next week. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in a few minutes. And something to keep in mind is that rain this mm -hmm. morning that we are already seeing out there. Yeah, and that wetness will stick around into tomorrow, and that's where we could see some freezing out on the roads. So be aware of that tomorrow as you get out on the roads today. Just be aware of that wetness. Yes, thank you, Vasily. Mm -hmm. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Not doing bad despite the rain. It's a wet one, that's for sure. So I uh, got to watch your following distance. Be a little careful, of course. Uh, hydroplaning, that can be an issue on a morning like this. Uh, traffic is starting to bunch up some of those routine spots. You can see in the upper left hand corner shot, ID4 10 mile, starting to bunch up pretty bad there and even backing on that 10 mile ramp a little anyway. It'll probably get worse here in the next little bit and a submerged slowing at Meridian Road now and then, stuff like that. But that's about it. Elsewhere, traffic running light. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron, and definitely important things to remember. When you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM, where you can find even more team traffic updates. Well, the Idaho City Basin School District is closing classes for today. It's a snow day, but they do say the hazardous road conditions and the forecast of possibly freezing rain and snow on and off throughout the day they just are making it safer for everyone to stay home. All right, now it's time for our question of the day. That question is 7% of people say it's never acceptable to do this on an airplane. I'm going to stick with my first guess of leaning back your chair in the airplane. What do you guys think? Ah, uh, uh, so many things, but <laughs> such a small probability. What are you thinking, Ashley? I think I'm going to stay with my guess of keeping the window shade up. Some people enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. Some people mm -hmm. prefer to have, you know, all dark in um, the cabin. Yeah, that's a great guess. I liked our director, Rich's guess. He um, was guessing bringing an entire Thanksgiving <laughs> meal on the plane. I think that checks out, guys. Yes. All right. Seal says, or Sill, pardon me, says play your device with no headphones. Yeah, people max volume. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that would not be a fun plane ride for sure. Yeah, you guys can all watch the movie together. <laughs> all right, Corey says reclining the Corey seat. Corey going with me. There yeah, you go. I mean, that can be frustrating. Not a lot of leg room. Oh, yeah, no, I feel that. Susan, snoring when they it's sleep. another one of oh. my thoughts, too. That's a good guess. Yes, or falling asleep on your seatmate. Mm -hmm. Snoring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> snoring so on them. Yeah. 
<laughs> so many things it could that be. That definitely <laughs> makes people angry. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it, guys. All right, still 15 minutes to get those guesses in. Of course, we'll reveal the answer when right before CBS This Morning. Got a little tongue-tied there. <laughs> All right, coming up on CBS 2 News, what, what, to do, what do you call a toy store that doesn't charge you for toys? Well, hey, we call it a great opportunity to pay it forward. Take a look inside the Christmas Toy Store. Pay It Forward is sponsored by Mountain America Credit Union. Well, this week's Pay It Forward goes to the woman who's the driving force behind the Christmas toy store at St. Vincent de Paul. They call it a store, but there's actually no charge for the toys. They're free to families in need. CBS 2's Brent Huntsaker gives us a look. Join the triumph of the skies. With a choir from Bishop Kelly. And free pizza. St. Vincent de Paul welcomes everyone to its Christmas toy store in Boise. To get to this night took a lot of work by a lot of volunteers. So they would check in here at our check-in station. And leading them all for the last six years is Katie Boyer. All right, so where are we gonna put a tree? On this day, Katie directs the setup of the Christmas toy store in Nampa. There's plugs somewhere. The Grinch's decoration, not a gift. Something to surprise and delight the kids. Now who's down in Whoville? Katie got her love of giving from her parents. This is mom, this is Mary. It's a tradition they carry on together. Without my parents, this wouldn't be happening. <laughs> they shop with me all year, they price everything, they work the phones, we have our call center, how do you register, my mom's on it daily. My mom and dad have always given me a great Christmas, so I just wanna share the love. This is the first time that Katie has put a store at the Idaho Job Corps campus. It's a good location, but more importantly, it gives Job Corps students an opportunity to volunteer. These types of give back programs where they're helping other people are the ones that they enjoy the most because they actually see the benefit directly to people in their community. And it's uh, arranged by age and gender all the way around the store. From newborn to 18 years of age. It's a lot of electronics. We do a lot of Bluetooth uh, speakers, headphones, gaming headsets. Nerf guns are really popular. There are also practical gifts like gloves and hats and even free gift wrapping. Those are great. Everything in the yes. store is either donated or bought with donations to St. Vincent de Paul. Some of hats and gloves from um, Brighton Group. For this labor of love, Katie is about to get a $500 pay it forward from Mountain America Credit Union. Hi Katie, Hi. my name's Andy, I'm from Mountain America Credit Union, and I came here on this amazing day of your guys' grand opening to talk to you and thank you for all the work that you've done to bring about gifts not only for young, but for teenagers who a lot of times during the holidays are forgotten. Yes. And so we just want to come by and give you a little gift from oh, Mountain America Credit Union thank to you. you. Please open it up and show us what you got. Okay. It's easy. Just go oh, right. <laughs> We oh. wanted to pay it forward to you and your wow. community. So thank okay. you for everything you do. <laughs> thank you so very much. Katie already has plans for the cash. I think this is pretty great. She says it will help provide a Merry Christmas for a family that the Boyers are sponsoring this year. Bye, Merry Christmas. Magnifying our gift into many gifts. That's the spirit of Pay It Forward. Love it. A story to warm our hearts this yes. morning. Yes, Brent yeah. does it again. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah, and speaking of warming up, guys, if you're in the Treasure Valley, you're stepping out the door, you may notice, well, first it's very rainy, mm -hmm. but a little warmer too. Yeah, wet and warm this morning. We are seeing temperatures around 39 degrees outside right now, but we are seeing rain. We're continuing to see a moderate to light rain here in Boise and across much of the Treasure Valley. Over in Meridian, that rain looks like it's a little bit heavier there, but as you go more north, you're continuing to see more snowfall, especially up in Cascade. And then as you move more and more north towards the mountains, we'll continue to see snowfall throughout the day today. That snowfall is going to last till about 5 o'clock today. We'll continue to see that snowfall about 6 to 10 inches of snow expected over in the West Central Mountains and over in the Boise Mountains. But here in the Treasure Valley, we're just going to see mostly rain throughout the morning and then into the afternoon. Then we'll start to clear it, see it clear up as we head into the evening. 
evening. And then Friday morning, Friday, we're going to see mostly sunny skies throughout the day. We'll see some more clouds roll in on Saturday, but Friday going to be mostly sunny skies, but we'll see that temperature drop to around 35 degrees. And we'll see these lows drop below the hard freeze line of 28 degrees. So we are going to see any kind of liquids on the ground freeze tomorrow. Taking a look at temperatures over the next seven days, 34 degrees expected on Friday, 35 on Saturday and 33 on Sunday. Temperatures will drop down to 31 degrees on Monday and Tuesday and 29 degrees on Wednesday. And then moving over to the mountains, we'll see temperatures drop to 23 on Friday, then 29 on Saturday and 30 on Sunday. And then take a look at those lows, single digit lows on multiple different days this week over in the mountains. Definitely need to start mentally and physically preparing for that cool down that mm -hmm. you're mentioning. Yeah, it's December now, so we're seeing that December weather starting to creep in, not only over in the mountains, but here in the Treasure Valley as well. Yep, start start getting yourself ready now. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, we bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center to see how it's looking out there. Well, we don't have any uh, accidents reported, and uh, volume just has uh, started to increase a bit more, of course. Nothing major going. There has been some of the merge slowing, even a little bit trying to show up in Nampa at, uh, say, Garrity. It can fluctuate, but in Meridian, a little more consistent at times. There are 10-mile Meridian Road or even a little bunched up near Eagle Road. So things start to kick in in routine fashion coming east on the freeway. And that has been about it. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. When you get in the car, turn on KBOI. That's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, still to come on CBS2 News, British royals crossing the pond for the first time since the death of the Queen. Their itinerary that includes a meeting with the president. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 6.54. Welcome back. British royals William and Catherine are in Boston to present a major environmental award later on this week. Michael George, he's there with more on the royal visit, which will include a meetup with the commander in chief. It was a royal welcome for the Prince and Princess of Wales Wednesday on their first U.S. visit in eight years. Here to present the Earthshot Prize, which honors environmentalists. Earth! They kicked off the trip by helping turn Boston City Hall green. Catherine and I are absolutely delighted to be with you today for our first engagement in the great city of Boston. The couple also took in an NBA game courtside, watching the Boston Celtics beat the Miami Heat. Some locals spent much of the day just trying to catch a glimpse. Is it exciting to have the Royals here in Boston? Oh, it's very exciting, very exciting. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm hoping they come over and we can like say hi to them. The Prince and Princess decided to present the Earthshot Prize here in Boston partially because it was home to President John F. Kennedy. William has said Kennedy's famous moonshot speech was his inspiration for launching the award. Boston was also the obvious choice because your universities, research centers, and vibrant startup scene make you a global leader in science, innovation, and boundless ambition. This is also the couple's first trip to the U.S. since Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, gave up their royal duties and relocated to California. This is a really important few days for the Waleses to get their message over about what the royal family is for, what working members of the royal family are for, the good that they can do. The White House says President Biden plans to meet with the prince and princess in Boston tomorrow, though the details are still being worked out. Michael George, CBS News, Boston. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. 7% of people say it's never acceptable to do this on an airplane. What is it? The answer really could have been anything, <laughs> yeah. but this one was ask someone to switch seats. Oh, okay. I mean, 7% so low, it really yeah. could have been anything like you said. Yeah, no. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you back here at 11 a.m. Drive safe out there. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours.